Welcome to Christchurch Georgetown on this the fifth Sunday in Lent. You'll see in the weekly email the Holy Week and Easter services are all published both virtual and in person and we hope you'll be able to join us for one of those throughout the week. Our Lenten series comes to an end on this Tuesday evening at 6.30 by Zoom when we welcome the Reverend Frank Wade who's coming to speak on the last word in our series, Love. So welcome to Christchurch on this, the fifth Sunday in Lent. Bless the Lord, who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest, and desire that which thou dost promise, that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each man teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Here endeth the lesson. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned 
and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and bought out all of my inequities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Epistle to the Hebrews. Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. As he says also in another place, Thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications, with loud cries and tears, to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard for his godly fear. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. In being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God to a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Here endeth the lesson.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew went with Philip, and they told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there shall my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing by heard it, and said that it had thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the ruler of this world be cast out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show by what death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come to the end of Lent, we find ourselves in a bit of a preparatory position, living a bit on borrowed time. Like Jesus, we know what will happen next week. We know what he means when he says that he will be lifted up from the earth, and we know that the day is close at hand. The Gospel of John this morning conveys something of that sense of immediacy, of poignancy, of evanescence, which the disciples and those around Jesus must themselves have felt. In the midst of this hubbub, as time seems at once to accelerate and also to slow, some Greeks come to the disciples saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. So great was Jesus' reputation that everyone around him, Jews and Greeks alike, were drawn to him. They wanted to see what the stories were all about. One of the most affecting parts of Lent and Holy Week, I think, is the opportunity that the period provides, a small but willing group to gather for prayer, to hear the word, to remember the passion, and to come forward again, those who, like the Greeks, wish to see Jesus. Like them, we want to know Jesus. We want to draw closer. And like many people on the fringes of the organized church even, we want to know if the stories are true. John Newton, the 18th century slave trader turned Church of England priest, wrote somewhere north of 450 hymn texts, uh, of which Amazing Grace is, of course, the best known. One of his less well-known texts, however, sums up what was at stake for those Greeks and what is at stake for us in wishing to see Jesus. Newton writes, What think ye of Christ is the test to try both your state and your scheme you cannot be right in the rest unless you think rightly of him. When the services of Lent and Holy Week work well, we are all converted, all reminded again of what we are doing here in this church, not only this morning, but also week after week, Sunday after Sunday. Lent and Holy Week draw us back. They draw us back to the central truths of the Christian faith and they draw us back to the cross itself. They remind us of what think we of Christ. We know well that Jesus was kindly to strangers, well, most of them. He was kindly to the infirm and the widow and the beggar. This morning's narrative from the Gospel of John helps fill in that picture. It helps to flesh out 
our understanding of our Lord on a more cosmic scale. Now is the judgment of this world, Jesus says. Now shall the ruler of this world be cast out. When we hear the ruler of this world, we are not hearing about political despots or tyrants, even the most abhorrent ones. We are hearing of the great power to whom the actions of those despots point. We are hearing of the twin evils of sin and death, evils which I suspect we know only too well. Sin and death on this understanding are their proper nouns, beginning with uppercase letters. In contemporary parlance, at least most of it, insofar as we speak and hear about sin and death, we're used to speaking and hearing about them with lowercase letters, denoting deeds and misdeeds or the extinction of a life. But in this context, Jesus is facing an enemy, which is sin and death, a malevolent force without a body, but with a very definite and observable presence in the world. Now, if all of this sounds a bit supernatural, then I would challenge you to observe an analogy, an analogy with that most supernatural force of all, the real God which you and I worship every single day of our lives, and that is the supernatural force which we call the market. None can shake the market's hand or send it a letter, and we can't even really locate it, but all of that makes it no less real, no less known and no less powerful. As the New Testament scholar Matthew Crosman puts it, it may seem reasonable enough to dismiss the personification of the market as mere metaphor, but observers from economists to comedians to theologians resist doing so. Spiritual or even theological language may be required to describe accurately our disposition toward this being the market. Well, as to the market, so too to sin and death. They may be no more than the function of their own constitutive forces, but they are real and deadly nonetheless. Sin is the economy of everything that happens without reference to the love of God, which is made known to us in Christ, and death is its inevitable result. Paul refers to sin and death in similar language. He says, we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world, world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Christ's ultimate encounter will not be with Pilate or with the religious authorities or the bloodlust of the crowd. His ultimate encounter will be with the powers of sin and death, powers which animate the forces of violence in this story and indeed in every age. Human history, our history, is a record of our impotence against sin and death, and conquering those powers is a work that lies within the power of God alone. As we have observed as we hurtle toward Holy Week and Good Friday, the pace of the action in our narrative is accelerating. And as Jesus and his disciples are drawn toward the denouement, toward Pilate, and toward the cross, so are we. And I, says our Lord, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. On the cross, Jesus Christ is bound together with all of us in the final uncharted realm of his humanity, which is our suffering and death. There is a reason why the cross, and this is the cross also with an uppercase C, there is a reason why the cross surmounts every church and every altar, why the faithful have worn it around their necks and tattooed it on their bodies for millennia. The cross is what gives meaning to meaningless suffering. The cross is what gives meaning to the inevitability of death. The cross is what gives meaning to those parts of our lives and the lives of the people we know and the lives of everyone around the world. The cross is what gives meaning to those parts of all of our lives which we would rather just forget. For Christians and for anyone else who would look upon it, the cross is the ultimate sign and signal of God's redemptive love for the world, our world, this world, in which the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, try as we might, are no match for sin and death. But our Lord does more than just show us the way. Our Lord has gone over to the other side. He has defeated the enemy that we could not, he has bridged the chasm separating man from God. That is how Paul can write that neither death 
nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is what we look forward to celebrating on Easter Day. That is where our path through Lent and Holy Week will take us as we follow our Lord's passion. And so as we make our way there, as we continue along this Lenten road, may we also, we who wish to see Jesus, keep our eyes firmly on the cross today and always. Amen. Let us confess the faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in our Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten without faith, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was also made man, and was crucified also for us by the Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he was again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and of the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these, our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, the presiding bishop, and Marianne, our bishop, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in righteousness and holiness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, and Muriel, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Joy Doty, Heidi Flynn, 
Paul Gamble, James Goble, Isabel Crum, Donnie Lancaster, Terry Peel, Asif Pervez, Ida Peterson, Laura Smith, Kit Thompson, Ann Townsend, Jeffrey Webb, and those we remember now either silently or aloud. We pray for the rapid distribution of safe, effective vaccines, an end to the global pandemic, and the restoration of health, wholeness, and stability. We pray for the mission, ministry, work, and witness of this parish. We give thanks for all the blessings of this life. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith. Make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy had promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith come unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and with thy spirit. Let us present our offerings to the Lord with reverence and godly fear. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is right, very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, who dost bid thy faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by thy word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which thou hast prepared for those who love thee. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And it institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this, as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, According to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we will humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to our, thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, 
may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept as our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching you to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are never ready so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world, the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members of poverty in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs to hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this thy people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know, know thee more fully and to serve thee with a more perfect will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 